皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So today, I like to talk about the interview that I took. Just the interview itself was about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and the video was posted about three days back、um, from the time I'm recording this podcast. But there is a really famous、uh, Japanese YouTuber called Takashi from Japan. He currently has 179,000 subscribers. That is amazing. What's amazing, even more amazing, is that he's still 22 years old,、uh, which means、um, he is about the age of my younger brother,、uh, minus five, six years than me. So I was、uh, really, really honored to be able to actually meet him because I have been watching a lot of his videos.、Um, if you don't know about Takashi from Japan, please take a look at the description box. I、uh, put the link to his、um, YouTube channel. But on、um, He does a lot of amazing interview videos. He goes out to, outside to the city you know, and just goes and asks people about、uh, questions that a lot of、uh, people might be interested in. For example,、um, he asks questions. I think、uh, one of his most viewed、uh, videos would be like, What do Japanese hate about, about Japan? So, what do Japanese people hate about their own country? Or、um, other videos would be like, What's it like being half Japanese in Japan and doing interview videos like this? And I think. Because personally, I really do not have the courage to do interview videos. I mean, going up to someone you don't know, like strangers on the streets, and asking them questions is just so difficult. I mean, I, I'm definitely not the kind of person that could do that. So I really, really admire his courage. And I actually asked him about that, and he said,、um, He just、uh, has a lot of experience in、uh, sales and everything. When he was doing an internship, he was actually、uh, working in the field of sales. So he has been really used to being rejected by people, you know, and just、uh, having the door slammed in front of his face kind of stuff, you know. So he just, he just never noticed that、uh, doing interviews on the streets just needs so much courage, you know. I thought he, he really thinks that it's something that everyone can do, but I'm like, no, I, I probably will never. Never be doing such a video in the future. I do, what should I say, admire it, and I really hope that I could someday, but will I actually be doing it?、Uh, probably no, to be honest, yeah. But, anyways,、uh, today's main topic, I, I did want to, of course, introduce Takashi from Japan、um, because I'm thankful that he took the time to come over to Kyoto and interview me. But also, I wanted to talk a little bit about the interview itself and the thing that I struggled when I was filming with him. So basically, if you take a look at the video, which is also in the description box, he interviewed me about my past, how I grew up, on my opinions on Kyoto, and also my future plans and such.、Mm-hmm. And especially the things that I talked about. Uh, about my past.、Um, to be honest,、I've, if you have been listening to my podcast channel for a while, I've actually have talked a lot about my, about my past. You know,、um, being born in Kyoto, but brought up in Hiroshima, lived in the US for six years, and I came back to Japan, experienced bullying, and yeah, going, going to high school. Um, in the international communication course, studying English, going to, to Canada, to Europe, and then wanting to study another language. So, I started studying Mandarin when I was in university, and then started working in the tourism industry, and so on and so forth, you know. And then leading to me start, start trying to start a business, and then that collapsing, and then started YouTube, and here I am, kind of stuff, you know. So, that part was okay. But the、um, other questions that he asked me、um, about Kyoto, especially, Um, the, this is something that I really noticed, but again, I made a podcast a few days back talking about how I'm actually different when I speak Japanese and when I speak English.、Um, especially about the topics about Kyoto. He asked me on,、um, he, he was actually in Osaka just a day back, and he could completely. Understand that the atmosphere in Osaka and to,、um, in Kyoto are completely different, and that because Kyoto has kind of like a different atmosphere, and he wanted to ask, is it difficult for people from overseas, foreign people, to live in Kyoto because of all these,、uh, you know, this different atmosphere, the local rules, and everything? And、um, of course, I tried my best to answer the best I could, but I, I, I was taking a look at the video that he published, and I was like,、uh, I really wish I could have sent something more concrete, you know. But to be honest, when I'm speaking in Japanese, it was impossible for me. I really didn't even、um, think that I'm not giving. 
providing that much information, you know, when I was speaking Japanese, because that is the way how Japanese people talk, I guess. You know,、um, because looking at subtitles, I really wanted, I was thinking I was really like being so ambiguous and not going, you know, my, what I explained was really fluffy, you know, fluffy, kind of floating in the air kind of thing, you know. And it's really made me realize that、uh, what I can say, you know, how much I can talk about my opinions when I speak in Japanese and when I speak in English are. Completely different, yeah. Especially because I was on the side being interviewed this time, I was really able to feel that. And I've actually been struggling with the same thing when I do the Voices from Japan series. Voices from Japan series, I usually, most of my videos, I've been talking in Japanese with Japanese people. And for Voices from Japan series, I'm the person who is interviewing, you know, I'm the interviewee, so I don't struggle so much with just ask, asking questions. But still,、um, I can't because it's the Japanese shogo mode. You know, I can't、uh, ask so many、mm, critical questions that I would be able to ask if I'm speaking English. you know? So I was able to really, again,、um, feel that when I speak different languages, I'm a completely different person. And right, right now, because I'm speaking in English, oh, and one more thing.、Um, It's probably because I am speaking in Japanese and the Japanese mode comes out that I tend to be more、uh, ambiguous and not straightforward, kind of,、um, what should I say, personality, way of communication pops up. But another thing is I probably fear, because I'm speaking in Japanese, a Japanese person, if they watch that video, they would probably understand what I'm saying, right?、Uh, what I'm talking about. So I'm pretty sure I was also afraid that some Japanese people might listen to the video. And possibly, you know,、um, just take parts of my story and again call me some names or whatever it is, you know? So I guess I was probably afraid of that too. Yeah. And a lot of people who show up in my videos and my Voices from Japan series, which I, we've already、um, filmed and haven't been able to post yet, for example, too, they also know that about 99.9% .9 of our viewers are、um, from overseas and they're not from Japan. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the 0.1% of people who have accounts that、uh, are should I say, connected to Japan are probably not Japanese either. Yeah, so there's very, very few Japanese people watching my videos, but still they fear that a Japanese person might listen to it and、um, they might be criticized from, for the things that they explain or talk about, you know, especially in the world of traditional culture, it gets really, really complicated and difficult. And also, Kyoto, too. Kyoto is all about、um, you know, reading the words behind the,、uh, the message or you know, reading the air and everything. I explained this too in the video where I talked about why Japan hates Kyoto. You know, it's all these、um, the front side, back side, Honne, Tatemaya stuff. Yeah. And once someone, for example, watches, that, watches a video of me talking in Japanese and saying something bad about Kyoto, they're not, no one's going to be coming up to me directly and saying, Saying, you were saying these bad things about Kyoto or Japan, they will just quietly smile and say goodbye. Yeah,、um, and they won't even say goodbye, by the way. Of course, they would just uh, uh, say something else, you know, that would be much more ambiguous, but, but in the end, trying to tell me that I'm not working with you or not seeing you anymore kind of stuff. So I was pretty, probably afraid of that too. Yeah. And by the way,、um, about the question that was asked in the interview, if I were to answer it if I'm speaking, as I'm speaking English right now,、um, but to be honest, I guess I might be saying something similar still, but maybe using different words. Is it difficult to live in Kyoto? Again,、uh, I think I talked about this before too, but if you're going to be living in, for example, an, an apartment, and if you have your community that you belong to in Kyoto, It wouldn't be such a problem, to be honest. There is someone that there's somewhere that you can belong to. It wouldn't be such a problem.、Um, if you don't have to connect to your local community so much, it's not that bad, to be honest.、Um, there really are hardly no occasions where you actually have to meet with people so much. That often, you know, in this world with all, everything online or so, and such. So, if you go to a university, if you have a community, if you train in a dojo with the people you like, I think that would 
probably be enough. I mean, you don't talk to so many people when you go to a grocery store or, you know, go to a local izakaya or, or stuff. You know, you could, but you don't have to. So, I think it would be different if you're gonna be living in Kyoto and also having living in a、um, an independent house or a separate house, you know, on its own. In that case, you will be considered. To a, a part of the community, and in that case, you will have to take part in all the community,、uh, local community、uh, festivals and activities, and you would have to pay some money for it too. So in that case,、um, getting along with neighbors might be a little bit difficult, but otherwise,、um, really, there's really nothing that difficult, and、uh, I guess. Maybe like talking with people on the streets or just random people at, at a restaurant or izakaya or something or a bar. Maybe、um, going to Osaka and、uh, meeting people there, they might be a little bit more open-minded and friendly and such. But if you're that the kind of person who would never do that, you know, going up to a stranger and talking, you know, that, that kind of stuff, which is something that I don't do usually,、um, you probably wouldn't be troubled in Kyoto to be honest. On、um, I think. Yeah, especially if you aren't going to be training in traditional culture either, you would never probably meet any of the negative aspects of Kyoto. So, yeah, that that would still be my opinion, I guess. So then, everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. So I know that there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to travel, study, or work, and even train in our traditional culture and such. However, I am afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we are facing a lot of social problems. We are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations—they're dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So, I want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I want to try to, to try to solve the social problems, evolve, preserve, and evolve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a brighter future. And to do that, my second step is to achieve two million subscribers by January 2023 on my main channel on YouTube. So, all your likes and comments will help to boost my videos. New viewers have never seen my videos before, so it'd be great if you can help me out. And my third and fourth steps are to start a business in selling merchandise, and also、um, starting a unit as a performing group with Team Last House Shogo. So I hope you can look forward to that too. Now on、um, Kazu, by the way, another、uh, what should I say? A secret store? Secret? Not not that secret, but for those of you who are li- always listening to my podcast till the end, thank you so much. I read all of your comments, by the way, when I talked about something I did not talk about in the main part, by the way.、Um, And I saw every comment saying, I, "I always listen to the end, Shogo, and thank you so much for that." Kazu, by the way, have really been struggling to decide what to start training in terms of instruments and music. He did、um, start Yai with me, right, with Kenjutsu with me, but he really does want to train two more things because that's like the average amount of things that、um, Team Team Last Ask Shogo trains in, except for me, who trains in five things. But anyways,、um, he right now is struggling with the instruments the most, and. He actually the next um what should I say uh, uh, experience lesson he's going to be taking just to just take a lesson as experience kind of thing is going to be the wadaiko the drums actually so we don't know what he's going to be doing in the end but he's looking forward to that right now and also he actually is a big fan of calligraphy too so he actually might be studying shodo. Under the sensei that wrote our hanging scroll that always shows up in our main videos, so that would be really exciting if we have a person who is、uh, who knows more about shodo calligraphy in our team. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to what he'll be training in the end. So I hope you can look forward to that too. Okay, then everyone, thank you so much for listening. Bye bye.